So in case you haven't heard yet, Spotify lost $4 billion in market value. Yes, that's billion with a B, following the announcement of artists like Neil Young and Joni Mitchell, stating that they want to pull their songs from the platform because they don't want to share the same platform with someone like Joe Rogan, who's spreading deadly anti-vaccine misinformation during a pandemic. And Spotify, up until this point, hasn't really responded. But because the medical misinformation is now hurting their business model, they were forced to make an announcement that they will indeed be trying to combat the spread of misinformation on their platform by, quote, adding a content advisory to any podcast episode that includes a discussion about COVID-19. Now, this isn't going to make a difference at all, but they're panicking and they're trying to stop the hemorrhaging. So they're announcing this. And it's shocking to me that they didn't already have this because even on Facebook, I think on Twitter, on YouTube, any video about COVID-19, you will see a little disclaimer. For more details about COVID-19 or vaccines, visit cdc.gov, yada, yada, yada. So it's shocking that they didn't even do that, which is not even the bare minimum. It's the most basic thing that you can do if you want to be responsible, given that these podcasts feature commentary about this topic from people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But still, you know, it's something that they're trying to do to stop the hemorrhaging. Now, Joe Rogan responded by being incredibly disingenuous and essentially playing dumb and lying, but he did at least show a modicum of humility in this particular clip, which we'll look at first. One of the things that Spotify wants to do that I agree with is that at the beginning of these controversial podcasts, like specifically ones about COVID, is to put a disclaimer and say that you should speak with your physician and that these people and the opinions that they express are contrary to the opinions of uh, the consensus of experts, which I think is very important. I'm sure, have that on there. I'm very happy with that. Um, also, I think uh, if there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. Uh, I would most certainly be open to doing that. Yeah, no fucking shit. Or better yet, what if you just didn't platform cranks at all on your platform? Because when you do that, even if you're bringing on people subsequently thereafter to kind of counterbalance the misinformation that you help disseminate, you're still setting up the situation where objectable truth is debatable when that's just bad. Being neutral for neutrality's sake doesn't actually help propagate the spread of the truth over misinformation. It just makes these non-debatable issues seem debatable. It's the same criticism that I have with regard to mainstream media and climate change. They'll bring on a climate change denier like Marshall Blackburn and Bill Nye and We'll get both sides, sure, but this makes it seem as if both sides are equal with respect to climate change when it's not equal. Both sides are not equal, and this bias towards neutrality implies that climate change is a debatable issue. When it's not a debatable issue, what we want is the objective truth, not to hear both sides when one side is completely batshit fucking insane and the other side is actual scientists who have studied this throughout the course of their entire lives. So that's not really going to help, but I guess it's better than nothing. Uh, but here's where he gets really disingenuous. This is what Joe Rogan said, courtesy of Sam Bifford from The Verge. These podcasts are very strange because they're just conversations, Rogan says. And oftentimes, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about until I sit down and talk to people. Bullshit. And that's why some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out, because I'm literally having them in real time. But I do my best, and they're just conversations. Oh, sure. And I think that's also the appeal of the show. It's one of the things that makes it interesting. So I want to thank Spotify for being so supportive during this time. And I'm very sorry that this is happening to them. Them, and that they're taking so much from it. Oh, well, gee golly, I'm just so surprised that this anti-vax loon who I invited on my program, who's currently trying to hawk his anti-vax book, would bring up anti-vax misinformation throughout the course of this two hour plus long conversation. I'm just so shocked. In fact, this is how shocked I was. This is me, surprised Pikachu face, when this anti-vax grifter who I brought on my show starts talking about vaccines in a negative light. Except Joe Rogan is in his 50s. There's no way he's this naive. I refuse to believe it. He might not necessarily be the brightest bulb, but there's no way he's that naive. I mean, you know what you're doing. And if you don't, then I, I don't know what to say. You're even dumber than I thought. But I think he knows what he's doing. If you bring on someone who is known for their anti-vax grift, then don't be surprised when they talk about anti-vaccine bullshit. It's like when he brings on somebody who is uh, a far-right grifter like Jordan Peterson. Oh, what? But they're talking about anti-trans issues when that's the reason why they're famous because of Bill C-16? Color me surprised. I never would have expected this from them. It's just he's so disingenuous here.
And anyone who believes him, you have to be as naive, if not more naive than him. Now, as you're going to see, he plays dumb a lot more. And this is a little bit of a compilation put together by The Recount where they show how what he's saying is it, just, it's it's lies. It's, he's so deceitful here. The podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation. If you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I, I go, no. I do not know if they're right. I don't know because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. Especially now when, when yeah. people are talking about actual microchips being injected into your arm to see if you have COVID-19. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Ivermectin alone if properly utilized, is capable of driving this pathogen to extinction. But I try to correct them. So if you're in a high-risk area, you take it, and it's it'll protect you. Again, I'm not trying to promote misinformation. And they're trying to say the children need it. When they don't, they don't need it. So... If I pissed you off, I'm sorry. He's so sorry. He never meant to spread misinformation. He only has the largest podcast on the planet, so it's not like he has this responsibility or anything to vet guests before bringing them on or maybe be a little bit careful with the way that he speaks about things that he knows he's been criticized for. He's sorry. He's sorry. It's such fucking bullshit. Now, look, to be clear, I am not advocating that we deplatform Joe Rogan. That's not what I'm saying here. But at a minimum, I think that it is absolutely valid that we criticize Joe Rogan and push back against the misinformation that he's spreading. And more importantly, I do think it is important to exert pressure on platforms like Spotify who go out of their way to promote voices like Joe Rogan. As Brian Tyler Cohen put it, Spotify isn't just hosting Joe Rogan. They signed a $100 million contract with him to host his content exclusively on their platform. This isn't about censorship. It's about the misinformation that Spotify is financially sponsoring. And this is absolutely correct. Spotify has thousands of podcasts, probably with millions of listeners, but the one that they promote is Joe Rogan. Why? Because that's a business decision. They didn't just give Joe Rogan a $100 million contract out of the kindness of their hearts. They believed that the return on that would be double, if not exponential. But in doing that, in overlooking the transphobia before they agreed to this contract, and overlooking his other absurd beliefs, the guests that he'd bring on, far-right individuals, they thought, oh, well, it's it, the controversy was worth it. Because the viewers that he'd bring in, the new subscription that he'd bring into Spotify, that overall would be better. And now it's hurting them, which is why they're starting to reverse course. This is all about business. And what's really a double standard, in my opinion, is the fact that there are artists on Spotify who get ripped off by Spotify. They pay uh, the lowest, if not one of the lowest, in terms of royalties to artists. But yet, they give Joe Rogan a $100 million contract, and he's spreading misinformation. So it's about what these platforms choose to promote. Are they platforms who are neutral? and just going to allow these voices to rise to the top, or are they going to promote this with dollars? Now, Joe Rogan would probably rise to the top anyway because he's the largest podcast platform on the program, but they thought it was worth $100 million bringing him on the platform. So now they have to live with those consequences of that business decision. And as Sam Sachs points out, if Spotify ever does cut Rogan loose, it will be a purely business decision, but it will be spun as some sort of vast liberal censorship project by the most annoying people on here. And just two days later, he was proven right, with Glenn Greenwald tweeting out, the pressure campaign on Spotify to remove Joe Rogan reveals the religion of liberals censorship. So if you ever criticize Joe Rogan or Spotify for promoting him, congratulations, you are an SJW censorian and you must want him banished into the ether forever. Except I don't see very many people outright calling for Joe Rogan to be deplatformed. I think maybe they just want this to be handled in a more responsible way. I don't think that Spotify should be promoting Joe Rogan. And it's the same stance that I have with other sources, authoritative news sources that YouTube promotes. For example, they will pr promote Fox News. Fox News will be in the trending news section on YouTube, but yet voices like me who have to basically uh, debunk the misinformation that Tucker Carlson is putting out, for example, we're not authoritative news sources. We get demoted in the algorithm, basically. So, you know, it's just a matter of, hey, maybe don't promote this voice over the other, but if you dare to do that, then uh, uh, it seems like you're a censorian, according to the Dick Riders and Joe Rogan's fan base. Anything that Daddy Rogan says is good because his wit wisdom is infinite and you can't question it. Otherwise, you must want him to be deplatformed, or at least that's the implication. Can we just not ever have a nuanced conversation anymore about things? I don't know what the correct answer is. I'm not saying that Spotify should promote 
authoritative news sources because we know that that doesn't work. It's it's a disaster on YouTube. I'm just saying maybe as a society, we can come together and find ways to stop the spread of misinformation or limit it. Maybe don't promote the people who are intentionally spreading misinformation. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I'm honest about that. I don't think deplatforming is the answer, uh, but I, I don't think that promoting authoritative news sources is the answer. I don't know. Not that that's like the dichotomy that we have to choose between. I don't know. But the point is that I want to have a conversation about this, and I certainly want to continue to criticize people like Joe Rogan who are disseminating propaganda and misinformation. But you can't do that because apparently you're a sensorian. It's just, you know, the situation is really frustrating. But either way, it, you know, it is nice to see Spotify finally reap a little bit of, you know, what they they sowed. Or, or I, I guess more specifically, uh, lay in the bed that they made for themselves. You promoted this dickhead. He was already problematic before you paid him $100 million. And now that he's basically taken a turn for the crazy, now you have to live with that. You know, I, I don't, again, I, I don't know what the solution is, but I know that uh, Joe Rogan right here is completely disingenuous. He's full of shit. He's playing dumb. And you can see right through this if you're not a sycophant. But for his audience, you know, nothing that he says or does is bad because this is a sort of cult of personality. It's the same thing like with Donald Trump. Nothing that Trump ever says is bad. Everything that he says is good because they believe that he is a good person and a good faith actor. So, you know, Joe Rogan's fan base is going to follow him no matter what. And I'm sure they'll be brigading this video afterwards, but I don't care. We have a right to push back on him. Now, if you disagree with me, calling out Joe Rogan's misinformation, then am I not right to assume that you want to censor me as well? Let's maybe actually have a real conversation about this and not just assume that one side is a censorious SJW that wants to censor him. Maybe we'll find some way to stop the spread of misinformation on this platform or again, limit it, contain it, force people like Joe Rogan to acknowledge that he has a sense or he should have a sense of responsibility with that gigantic platform. Either way, I don't know. I, I'm honestly sick of hearing about Joe Rogan, but he's not going to go away because he has the largest platform on the planet. So we will have to find some way to, you know, combat the spread of his misinformation. And at a minimum, I can use my sp small platform to push back. But, it, you know, it doesn't really make a difference in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, maybe I'm just fucking, I don't know, farting in the wind. I don't know. Were you acting like a...